Hello friends, welcome to AQYS YouTube channel. This session is a part of our quick revision series, Prelims Atulya. And in today's session, we'll focus on fiscal policy. So right now, friends, we are covering economy and so far we have had several sessions on economy. We discussed the basic concepts which were asked in past years. After that, we discussed uh, some significant indices, reports and schemes. And in today's session, we'll try to analyze the basic concepts related to fiscal policy. So let's get started. Let's try to know what a fiscal policy is. See, we come across this term every now and then in the newspaper. It is mentioned in the media a lot. So this fiscal policy, it is a method, it is the means by which a government adjusts its spending levels and it adjusts its tax rates. So why does the government do it? Why does the government increase or decrease taxes? It does that to monitor and influence our nation's economy. So this fiscal policy, it is a sister strategy to monetary policy. I know that uh, you must have studied about monetary policy. We know that this monetary policy is handled by the RBI, Reserve Bank of India. So these two policies are used in various combinations to direct a country's economic goals. So these policies are used to achieve the economic goals of a country. Now let's talk about the government budget. See in India, government budget is normally presented in the parliament in the month of February every year. So before this budget is presented, for many days there are speculation among people about the expected changes in various taxes. So let's try to know what this government budget is. See, government incurs various expenditures to provide basic facilities such as education, health. So this government it spends money to increase production, to reduce unemployment, to decrease uh, the poverty levels, to remove inequalities in income. So such expenditure of government promotes welfare of the people. So to finance this expenditure, government raises revenue from various sources such as taxes, public debt and these financial resources that fund government expenditure are raised by people. Now what is the standard definition? of the budget. See, a budget is a consolidated financial statement prepared by government on expected public expenditure and public revenue during a financial year. Now let's try to analyze the structure of budget. This is very very important and you must have clarity with regard to the structure of budget. There might be a potential question in your prelims. See, it has two components. First is receipts and second expenditure. Now these revenue receipts are current incomes of government. It means these revenue receipts do not create any liabilities and these revenue receipts do not cause any reduction in the assets of the government either. Okay, So these revenue receipts can be classified into tax revenue and non-tax revenue. Now what is this tax revenue? Before we try to know that, let me try to define what a tax is. See, a tax is a legal compulsory payment made by the people and firms to the government of India. Okay, so these people, they make the payment and they do not expect any direct benefit in return. So this tax, it is imposed on, on the people by the government of India. So what the government does is that this government collects the revenue and this revenue is collected from various taxes like income tax, sales tax, service tax, excise duty, custom duty. Now this income tax, it is imposed on those people who earn income such as wages, salaries, rent, interest and profit. Okay. And you must know about sales tax as well. This is the tax on the sale of the goods. So wherever we purchase a good, a part of our payment goes to the government as sales tax. And service tax, we already know that we pay this tax when we use a service such as telephone service and excise duty you must know this as well that it is a tax paid by the producer manufacturing a good and custom duty is paid when a good is imported or exported okay now let's talk about non-tax revenue so under non-tax revenue incomes made by the government from sources other than taxes okay so we have commercial revenue administrative revenue so these two categories are under non-tax revenue so commercial revenue, let's try to anal analyze what commercial revenue is. See, you make payment for the services of electricity, railways, postal stamps, toll. 
so this money it goes to the government so this is how government is getting the money under commercial revenue so this money it is received by the government in the form of prizes paid by people for goods and services okay now let's talk about administrative revenue see this administrative revenue it arises because of administrative services that you are receiving okay so fee in the form of passport fees government hospital fee education fee court fee okay fine penalties license fee okay so all these sources are categorized under administrative revenue now let's talk about capital receipt so we discussed revenue receipts do not create any liability revenue receipts do not cause any reduction in the assets of the government but capital receipts these create liability and these also cause the reduction in the assets of the government okay so the major sources of the capital receipts of the central government are borrowings okay under borrowings we have domestic borrowing it means when you are raising the funds within the country that is domestic borrowing okay then external borrowings it means that you are borrowing the money from foreign governments or international bodies like imf uh, world bank so these foreign borrowings by the government bring in foreign exchange into the domestic economy then recovery of loans so the loans recovered by the central government from state and local governments are capital receipts in the budget because recovery of loans it reduces debtors and debtors are assets so remember this recovery of loans it falls under capital receipts now this investment see this is a very recent source of capital receipt by which the central government has been mobilizing financial resources and it has been happening since 1991 because prior to 1991 the central government owned 100% of the shares of public sector undertakings and after 1991 the government adopted the policy of privatization of psus consequently it started selling its shares to general public and to financial institutions so this selling of shares of psus by the government is known as disinvestment of psus now let's talk about the expenditure See expenditure it can be classified into two ways so capital expenditure and revenue expenditure then we have plan expenditure and non plan expenditure so when government incurs expenditure to create assets so when government is building schools hospitals road bridges canals railway lines so when government is doing that it means it is expanding then its spending is known as capital expenditure okay so when the government is reducing the liability remember this fact when government is repaying the loan that is also capital expenditure so one more thing you have to understand here that when government incurs expenditure and this expenditure do not create any asset neither does it uh, reduce any liability then this expenditure is revenue expenditure so when you are paying the salaries to government employee or when you are making the payment for the maintenance of public property or or you are providing free education or health services to people so all these expenditures are revenue expenditure so these revenue expenditures do not create any public asset now let's talk about plan expenditure and non plan expenditure so after independence friends our country adopted the path of planning and why did we adopt the path of planning so that we could achieve the economic development so under planning so many provisions were made in the government budget for the expenditure we included the concept of five year plans and you know what that under five year plans we make the payment we means government makes the payment to achieve the goals which have been set so every year payment is made for these five year plans so this is plan expenditure that this is happening in accordance with plan we already have a set plan a fixed plan and payment is being made for this so this is known as plan expenditure now non plan expenditure it is a routine expenditure okay so expenditure on police judiciary water supply sanitation legislatures so all these payments constitute the form of routine expenditure okay so all these concepts are very very important and you have got to develop the lucidity regarding these topics because there might be some questions in your prelims these are very very important and do not forget to download these notes these notes are have been created by our content team keeping in view that prelims is around the corner so you can keep revising 
and this is as i said yesterday as well that this is a very very uh, significant crucial time for everybody who is appearing this year so keep working hard and if you have liked our initiative if you are finding our videos useful then do not forget to subscribe our youtube channel for more such videos and you can follow our social media platforms for daily current affairs content so that's all for today's session i'll see you in the next session soon bye bye